Welcome to Epitomic Entrepreneurs. My name is Christopher Els. Uh, this is brought to you by MoneyWeb TV. And with me, I have Nick Delahunt. He's a founder and developer of FingerTalk. It's a mobile app which assists the hearing and the deaf uh, to communicate. And he'll just be giving us a, a brief introduction into the app where you can get the app and why he started it. So, how's it, Nick? Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? Good yourself. Oh, good. Um, Nick, just so before we get into the into the nitty gritty of the app, uh, do you want to just give us a background into who you are as a person, how you got into the app space, and all of that? When we came up with the original idea, it's actually a bit of a funny story. My my wife was watching a, a series that was based on sign language, um, American sign language at the time, um, and you know she was telling me that she couldn't find anything based on South African sign language anywhere on the web. Um, you'd have to go and pay, you know, to can study at some university. Uh, so, you know, I challenged her to that and I had a look and you know, couldn't find any content uh, online anywhere um, and then realized, you know, well, there's an app in this because, you know, if you're charging anywhere between 3,800 and 12,000 Rand for a sign language course, you've got many people who can't afford that. You know, people who want to learn just the basics even, you know, um, you know you've got companies like Woolworths who employ deaf, deaf staff, you know, behind their tills. You know, but you can't communicate with them unless you've studied some sort of sign language, you know, and even at its most basic level, you know, if you don't understand sign language, you're not going to speak to them. Um, so we, I decided, you know, th th there's an app in this, and you know, I started doing all the research that I needed to, and you know, decided, well, this is one way we could potentially bridge that gap between the hearing and the deaf in South Africa. Then, like, how would they get access to this app? Does it uh, does it involve an internet connection, uh, or can you uh, will you be able to access the app offline as well? Uh, yes, um, the entire premise behind the app is to exactly what you've just mentioned. Um, you know, I had the rural people in mind as well. I mean, I have, any, I have everybody in mind because doctors are so, so expensive in South Africa. You know, mm. you don't want people to rely on having to stream anything or download, you know, the content they want to consume. So I, you know, I had a look at what we could do in terms of creating all content within the app. Okay. Um, and yes, the app is built that way. It's one download. You know, when you install the app, you log in and that's it. Uh, that's the only time you need an internet connection unless you want to use the gamified f um, functions within the app. Cons consuming the actual content, Everything is on the app. There's no internet connection required. You could learn it in a rural area, rural area where there's no internet connection, or you could learn it you know, underground on the car train on the way to Santon Station, yeah. where you know there's absolutely no connection whatsoever. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 completely on your device. No internet connection needed. What's the the revenue model, the business model of this? Because um, people may want to know, like, is this a is this a free download? Is it a is it a paid version? Um, this is a cause related app, largely. Yeah. I mean, it's a niche app for South African con um, uh, for South African users only. Um, you know, we will eventually look at globalizing it with other with other languages as well, with other sign languages as well. Um, but the revenue model behind this, it used to be a paid app. Um, mm. We've undergone a whole bunch of commercial discussions as well, and we've now looked at, at releasing the app completely for free. It's now 100% mm. available great. for free. Um, the idea behind that is to get people in touch with people, people communicating with people. I love that. Um, you know, what we found in terms of if we have to speak money is, what we found is the people who are consuming the app are people who typically don't have access to a credit card. And that's what Google Play Store, you know, Apple iTunes, you know, yeah. all of them re require, you know, a a um, a credit card, access to a credit card. Um, most people don't have, most people within this audience don't have a credit card or access to one. Um, so we decided to take that burden away from them and provide the app for free, um, which has been quite quite uh, brilliant because uh, you know it's it's led to quite an overwhelming response, you know, in terms of the feedback we receive, you know, on a weekly basis. Um, you know, I have people, parents emailing me, you know, stating, thank you so much, you know, you've put me, you've, you've enabled me to communicate with my child, you know, mm. who's deaf, you know, or I'm a deaf parent, or I'm a deaf child, you know, I've had a teacher communicate uh, communicate with me as well, you know, or email me, um, stating, thank you, you know, this has helped her in her class, you know, um, because youngsters also still forget signs. Yeah. Um, so it's helped them, they use it as a reference, um, which has really helped, and the fact that you, it's pocket size, you can take it wherever, you know, that, that's the main aim now. Um, yeah. In terms of revenue, Going forward, um, the idea behind the app now is to, to to create as big a user base as possible, an engaged community, and then um, you know potentially charge advertisers to charge within the within that space. And when you're looking at the the app usage, is it easy to use for all ages? Um, how does it? Uh, how would you basically pitch the app to? Uh, so parents, would their kids be able to use the app as well? Absolutely. Um, anybody who can read can use the app. Um, that, that was the number one consideration um, when I took this project on a couple of years ago was, you know, you, you can't just put it into the hands of the parents. You've got to put it into the hands of everyone, youngsters. Yeah. You know, you've got to almost, you know, for lack of a better term, trendify South African Sign Language to try and get yeah. people to get people using it, you know. And that's got to be across all ages because I feel the youngsters 
take up this information, this you know, this content a lot easier than you know than the older generations do. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot easier for them, and therefore you need to, you need to tailor make the app for them. You know, make sure that they are also capable of of consuming the app. Um, you know, you'll see within the app, for instance, uh, with the getting started, you know, the five criteria and everything, it's, it's broken down really simply. It's really simple to read. It's not large co- pieces of content, you know, in terms of understanding what the foundation is behind sign, la- sign language. Yeah. Um, it's it's really simple to to take in that information, understand it, and then go and learn the language, mm. which is what the app does. And as I've mentioned, you know, I'd like to to create a trend within South Africa because we've got this, you know, we've got the separation between hearing and deaf at the moment. You know, there's, there's, there's currently not too much being done out there. There is some amazing work being done by some yep. amazing people. Um, but, you know, you've, you've still got these segregations and, you know, you're not, the, the, the deaf aren't being included into the greater society at the moment. Yeah. Um, you know, yes, I've mentioned companies like Woolworths who hire, you know, and employ deaf people, you know, to, you know, to work in their stores. But, you know, if you don't know any deaf people, would you be able to communicate with them, you know, if you, if you came across a deaf person, you know? Yeah. How would you go about, you know, if your company employed a deaf person, for instance, how would you go about including that person into the greater conversation, into, yeah. you know, into just the greater community as well? I mean, they also, you know, there are, I think, over, over 400,000 deaf people in South Africa. Oof. That's excluding those who just have a hearing impairment. Yeah. You know, those, those are deaf people. Those people need to be integrated as well, um, that, and that is the point behind the app is to be able to help bridge that that gap between the hearing and the deaf. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would state, I, I would I would advise and you know urge everybody to get involved in downloading the app and you know and learning sign language because you know you'd want to create one inclusive society. Yeah, and this would be a great tool for big corporates like you mentioned with Woolworths and other big corporates uh, where they've got thousands of employees if they've got only a handful of deaf of deaf staff to be able to make them feel as if they are one with the staff, as if they integrate it into everyday life uh, with, their, with their employees. Yes, absolutely. Um, and also, I mean, if you look at, you know, South African Sign Language potentially becoming the 12th official language in our country, mm. you know, um, there is a big drive for that at the moment. I feel almost everybody's going to have to learn sign language at some stage because, yes, like you say, um, corporates are going to start hiring deaf people, yeah. and correctly so, you know. Um, but you'd need to have everybody be able to communicate with everybody, not yeah. just through written text, but also through normal conversation, which will include sign language. Yeah. So yes, I, I agree with your point completely. In your opinion, like with you being in app developments and everything, how would you say the whole app space is in South Africa compared to the to the global space? Um, and would you encourage the teens, uh, the 20-somethings or 30-somethings to get into mobile app developments or learning how to code as early as possible? And do you see that as, a, as the next big thing in where we are now? Um, yes, definitely. Um, in terms of there's a lot of scope for, for, for app development. Um, but what's more important is content. Yeah. Um, I find, you know, and I personally play in that space at the moment is educational apps. Um, you know, educational content being the operative part of that. Um, you know, there's, there's a massive gap in terms, of edu- uh, in terms of our educational content within South Africa at the moment. And I find that's where the, 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 the gap lays. You know, um, you, I, would, I would encourage every teen to start looking at how they could bridge these content gaps, you know, yeah. um, whether it be teaching maths in a simple way, whether it be teaching sign language, for instance, or learning sign language, or whether it would be helping, you know, bridge whatever other gap there is, you know, um, first potentially look at your content and then look at your 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 your, your development side of things. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would advocate for everybody to go and learn coding. I mean, that's, that's something, a skill that we should yeah. all have. But, you know, and, and there are many, many technologies out there which make it easier and easier. You know, you, yeah. there are some technologies which, that exist that allow you to write an app without writing a line of code. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's all about the content. So um, Robert Kiyosaki, you know, is famous for stating, know your why. Yeah. Know why you want to write something, uh, to, to create something and know what you want to achieve. Yeah. Um, and that's how I started with Finger Talk is I knew that there was a gap. I knew what I wanted to achieve with it. The coding was secondary. I mm-hmm. went and learned that. We can all learn coding. Nobody is devoid of learning. But the, the important thing is know what you want to achieve. And my biggest message to any, any teen out there or any you know, person in their the, the early 20s is go and find those gaps yeah. and know what you want to achieve. When you know what you want to achieve, the how becomes irrelevant. You'll find a way yeah. as long as you know what you want to achieve and why. On the basis of the, of the education fronts, uh, do you see more cause-related or education-related apps uh, entering the, the space in South Africa on a global scale? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that, that, is, that is a given. I mean, you know, there's, there's a massive demand for education within South Africa. Mm. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be an app that sits within the, the app store. It could be an app created as a web app or a, you know, a custom-built app that you put onto your tablet you know, within classrooms. Um, but there's massive demand for this. Yeah. There's massive need for it, you know. Um, 
because we're, we're an economy that hasn't quite completely absorbed and, and um, adopted yeah. you know, technology the way that we should have or the way that the, the Americans have. But you know, there's massive need for something like that, mm. you know, for a technology and an educational revolution. Yeah. Um, I find that education is the space to be in at the moment. Um, you know, the Ubers exist, the Facebooks exist. You're not going to compete with them. You're not going to yeah. go and create the next social network. You really aren't. You know, um, so you need to start finding what's going to work, and especially if you can localize it to a, a market that needs it. Yeah, like you know, a niche. A niche exactly, market, yeah. exactly. Uh, you know, for instance, sign, sign language, South African sign language for South Africa, but you might be able to create, you know, maybe potentially another Uber for another country that doesn't have access to an Uber, you know, or where, yeah. Uber's le le where the legislation doesn't allow Uber to come in. So you've got to look at the market and what that market needs. But I find education to be the place at the moment, especially if you look for things like cause-related um, apps, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's the space I would like to play in, and I think that's, that's a growing space and space we should all be playing in. And if you had uh, wide-eyed, bushy-tailed, uh, keen entrepreneurs standing in front of you right now, uh, what five tips would you give them? Now, these could be people who are either looking to start their own businesses, guys who have started their businesses but seek advice, um, or just simply people who are who are startups and doing well. Like, what what uh, tips, codes, uh, tricks would you give them? Number one is know your why. Mm. Know why you want to achieve something. So, understand your market. You know, know why why you want to put something into the market, whatever it is, you know, mm. it could be a shoe shining shop, whatever it is, know, know, you know your why and what you want to achieve. Secondly, know what it is that you want to do to achieve that, right? Mm. So you know you want to create an app or you know you want to open a store or you know you want to do whatever. Number three is, you know, figure out the how, go and yeah. learn. Um, but also, actually, that, that'll be number four. Let's park it for number four. <laughs> no, number three would be research, yeah. tons and tons of research. Um, you know, everything from competitor analysis to find, you know, finding out what, who else is playing in that space, who is currently doing it. Find out if there's nobody else doing it. Ideally, there's nobody else doing it. Yeah. You know, and those who are doing it, you know, make sure you can differentiate yourself. Make sure you can find some way and something to offer to, to the you know, users or the consumers that your competitors cannot. Yeah. And then, you know. Your or, unique selling points. And, yes, yeah. exactly. And then also you've got market research in terms of mm. your consumers, you know, the people yeah. you want, the people who you're essentially asking to spend money on your product or service. Make sure that what you're offering is something that they want. Make mm. sure that they're prepared to spend money on what you want. Yeah. Some of the best advice I received was, you know, when it comes to pricing, make sure that people are prepared to pay what you want. Yeah. Otherwise, find a way to, to, to release your service and product to them at the cost that they would, that they would pay for it. Yeah. It's nothing worse than a business going under because they're overcharged by five rand, yeah. for instance. And then number f number four, as I mentioned, would be you know go figure out the how. Yeah. I don't know number five at the moment. <laughs> I think it'll be just make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. Um, yeah. Because it is hard work. Thanks, Nick, for joining us today on Epitomic Entrepreneurs. Thanks for having me. The segment was brought to you by MoneyWeb TV, and Nick will be saying cheers from his side in sign language. You are watching Money TV.